to present this 3D printer in a video. I accepted the offer because I'm looking for an up-to-date device for further tests with my direct granules extruder. There will be more on this in coming videos, first I'll take a close look at the Sidewinder X2 in its original configuration. This 3D printer has a work area of 30x30x40cm and is therefore suitable for large prints. The firmware is based on Marlin and the manufacturer fulfills the GPL license by publishing the modified source code. There is a link to the corresponding GitHub page directly in the download area of Artillery 3D, that's exactly how it should be. With that, anyone who likes to upgrade or retrofit the Sidewinder X2 in an unconventional way can get the full potential of the mechanics and electronics. Closed source devices will no longer enter my workshop. The printer ships almost completely assembled. Only the frame has to be screwed on the base... ...the holder for the filament spools must be screwed on... ...and four plugs have to be connected to finish the assembly of the printer. The electronic components are located in the base of the printer. After removing the cover plate it can be seen that the wiring looks tidy and the plug connections are locked in place with hot glue. The power supply unit has an output voltage of 24 volts at a maximum of 8.5 Amps which corresponds to about 200 watts. The four stepper motor drivers are plugged onto the mainboard, that's how I like it because the driver can easily be replaced in the event of a defect. The Marlin firmware runs on an ARM processor type STM32. The second STM32 processor is located on the board with the touchscreen. This board also contains the connections for the USB stick and the microSD card reader via which the print data can be read. The Z-axis is guided along two 40x20mm extruded aluminum bars and driven by two stepper motors via spindles. The two spindles are linked at the upper end by a timing belt. This prevents the two spindles from moving asynchronously when the stepper motors are switched off. With that, the height of the X-axis above the print bed never has to be readjusted. The X-axis moves along extruded aluminum with the dimensions 50x20mm, also guided by plastic rollers with ball bearings. The ribbon cable running to the extruder is attached to the bar of the X-axis, there is no tangled cable anywhere on the device. That ribbon cable leads to a tiny board which serves as a distributor to the individual components of the extruder. In case of a fault, the direct extruder can be dismantled quite easily with just one hexagon tool. The built-in stepper motor has a gear reduction of 3 to 1 with which the filament is powerfully pushed towards the nozzle. What looks like plastic gears is in fact solid metal. An advantage of the open gear design is that you can move the filament easily by hand. The threaded part of the 0.4mm nozzle is 16mm long which enables a higher material throughput compared to a normal, short neck nozzle. The print bed moves along the Y axis and is guided by 6 plastic rollers along 60x20mm extruded aluminum. The backlash of all axes can be adjusted by eccentric nuts. If the mechanics is adjusted correctly, all axes run very smoothly and without noticeable backlash. The maximum speed of the Z-axis is anything but low. The holder for the filament spools is on top of the frame, up to 1kg spools with a normal width fit into the construction. The filament sensor is attached to that spool holder. The maximum temperature of the print bed can be set to 130 degrees Celsius via the very responsive touchscreen. 
40 degrees Celsius are reached after 1 minute, 60 degrees Celsius after 2 minutes, 90 degrees Celsius after 3 minutes, and 100 degrees Celsius after only 4 minutes. After 5 minutes more than 120 degrees Celsius are reached, the 110 degrees Celsius specified by the manufacturer are easily within reach. The ambition temperature in my video studio at the time of the measurement was around 18 degrees Celsius. The high performance of the bed heating is achieved because it is operated with the mains voltage of 220 volts. As protection against the high voltage, the coated glass plate cannot be removed but is glued to the aluminum plate of the bed heating. The mains voltage is supplied via a flexible rubber insulated cable on the back of the device, I don't see anything to complain about here. The bottom side of the print bed is also well insulated, both thermally and electrically. There is a sensor for automatic leveling of the print bed on the extruder. With the auto level function, the print bed is measured at a grid of 25 points. Before the first startup, the print bed should be adjusted following the classic method at the four corner points with a sheet of paper. The set offset of the sensor should also be determined using the paper method and don't forget to store the value afterwards. The auto level function delivers good results so that manual leveling should only be necessary rarely. With the four large hand wheels, however, the height of the print bed can be comfortably fine adjusted at any time. That's how I like it. So let's start a first test print. The Sidewinder X2 works very quietly. While the parameters are printed, the movement of the axis can hardly be heard at all. All fans also work pleasantly quietly. When the infill in honeycomb pattern is printed at a speed of 40mm per second, the printer becomes a little louder. This is due to rapid changes in direction along the X and Y axis. But here too, the emission is far from being uncomfortably loud. Now that I have found a way to recycle old prints, my aversion to printing benches has diminished. The layer height is set to 0.2mm. The material is PLA. Both the retract of 4mm on the extruder and the movement of the axis without extrusion are done with a very high speed. Both ensure that stringing cannot be seen. The print is done after about two and a half hours, I am very satisfied with the result. No more words about the Benji here, because you can find high resolution photos of this print on my pages. Simply have a click on the link to get your own impressions of the achievable print quality. Direct extruders are well suited for flexible materials. The Sidewinder X2 is no exception. Here I am printing two ceiling rings out of flexible filament. When moving from one ring to the next you can see that the retract works very well with the soft material, the filament does not get tangled in the extruder. However, the extruder cannot completely avoid stringing when printing with TPU. The Sidewinder also delivers good results with a rubber-like filament. The two rings with a diameter of 45mm and a height of 4.5mm are printed after about one hour.
With the geared extruder and the long brass nozzle, the Sidewinder X2 promises to be able to deliver high material throughput. In practice, this is relevant at high printing speeds with a large extrusion width and a layer thickness of more than 0.2mm. I need a couple of gears for an upcoming project. Since these only have straight outer walls, the layer thickness is of rather low importance for the print quality. In order to process the print as quickly as possible, I use a layer height of 0.4mm. The toothed outer walls are printed at 30mm per second... ...the infill at 60mm per second. The extrusion width is set to 0.7mm. With these parameters, a lot of plastic is forced through the nozzle. Compared to my standard settings of 0.2mm layer height and 0.5mm extrusion width at a maximum speed of 40mm per second, more than 4 times the amount of plastic is extruded in the same period of time. The print job is processed correspondingly faster. It took only 45 minutes to complete. The final print is a part needed for one of my milling machines. Here I have set the layer height back to my standard size of 0.2mm. All other parameters such as print speeds and extrusion width are left as in the previous print. The difficulty with this test lies in the material used. It's a spool of PLA that I bought for an extremely low price. As expected, extremely cheap was synonymous with extremely bad. There are large variations in the diameter of the PLA filament. Especially in passages with a too large diameter, this means that the extruder can no longer push the filament through the hot end. None of my existing printers has been able to process this filament. The geared direct extruder of the Sidewinder gives me hope that it could work. And that's how it is, the print job succeeds without the filament clogging the extruder. The Artillery Sidewinder X2 is a 3D printer just the way I like it. The mechanics is robust, all cables are neatly laid and the device worked without any problems during the tests, very quickly and quietly. There is no frippery, the printer has everything that is needed for printing in really good quality and nothing else. As usually, there are high resolution photos of the prints made in this video and many detailed photos of the Sidewinder X2 on my website. Have a click.